the Nourish coaches say we truly can reimagine and recreate ourselves with nourishing lifestyle practices, following the Nourish Five Foundations of Health. It's a philosophy that gently guides people to find their own definition of health and wellness through nourishing foods, quality sleep, movement, a growth mindset, and connection with others. Hello and welcome to this episode of Ironing Out the Wrinkles. I'm your host, Ros McMaster. And I'm your host, Kate Shaw. Together we're taking the age out of ageism, helping men and women embrace life after 50 with less fear. Do you want to feel good in your body, gain energy, have quality sleep, a positive mindset, and meet your health goals? If you answered yes, Stick around because today we're joined by Debbie Peterson and Wendy Bright Fallon of Nourish Coaches. Debbie and Wendy are nationally board certified health and wellness coaches, inspirational speakers, podcasters and co-authors of two cookbooks and a workbook. It's Debbie and Wendy's mission to help make the world a healthier place. In this episode, they'll discuss ages and language around wellness, refocusing on wellness, not sickness, as we age, and peri- and postmenopause challenges with health. And of course, their five foundations of health, which we're really excited about. So much information. Debbie and Wendy, welcome. Thank you. So happy to be with you. Yeah, it's um, there's so much to cover and we've been listening to uh, your podcast, we've been watching your videos and what I absolutely love is that you tailor everything to the individual. It's not a one size fits all and we know just because something's good for you doesn't mean it's good for you and your five foundations that that cover sleep and connection yeah. and diet and exercise. Well-being. Yeah. yeah. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. So um, let's get going. Yes. Would you like to talk about your five um, foundations of health, please? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, well, the truth is, is that for me, this is Wendy, I originally thought that everything could be fixed by food, you know, that food was just everything. If I could get my eating right, then my energy would be great. My uh, attitude would be great. And I would just feel great in my body. And it very quickly on my journey realized that there are so many more things in our life. We're kind of like a web. So over time, Debbie and I created the five foundations because they really, they really do feed each other. We need to move and connect and have this growth mindset and if and and sleep too um when we raise the bar just a little bit just one percent a day on any of those we'll get to feeling better yeah debbie you want to say anything more about that how it yeah came to I mean, it's sort of when you're out in the world and you hear people talking about health they do they talk about food and exercise it's like those two things people believe those are the two things that are going to keep you healthy forever and, and they're not wrong, but th it is so much more. There's so much more. We've had clients that have been religious about their exercise and their eating, and they were unhealthy people. They were people that were not nourished. And it's because their mindset wasn't, you know, in a really good place. It wasn't a growth mindset. It's because they weren't getting great sleep. It was because they were isolated or lonely or alone a lot of the time, or they had bad connections with the people. Um, and so you you can't ignore these other things and you can't you can't just do some of them and not the others like she she was saying it's, we're a web it's a web and they all interact with each other because for example if you're if you're depressed and you're not feeling well you're uh, because of your 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 mind isn't where you want it to be you're not going to want to fix a, a nourishing meal you may not sleep well. And if you're not sleeping well, you're going to be too tired to exercise or to go out with friends. So it's every single one of them have, they interact with each other. And that's the biggest part of our five foundations is how they interact and how important they all are. 
Yeah, and it, that's the whole thing, isn't it? And, and if you're tired too, you're more likely to crave something sugary and sweet to give you that energy boost. And so, oh, a quick yeah. microwave meal that's yeah. probably not nutritious. Yeah, and <laughs> and I think um, I heard you talking about the link between gut health and sleep as well, mel melatonin and gut health. Yeah, there's so many things in our body that happen automatically that is so beautiful that we forget about all the time. Just our breathing every day is a natural way of detoxing the body. And so we've got a lot of messages about how you can do this and that and take this and, and none of that is wrong. Again, it's just that our body has all these wonderfully natura natural natural cascades you know all the hormones are kind of touching each other and the gut brain access and it's it's just fascinating and when we when we one of our tenets is really to help our help everyone move from the headspace and all the information and move into our body a little bit more and when we move into our body a little bit more and start noticing what happens when the um when we get better sleep and we have a little bit more clarity of mind and then oh we have more clarity of mind and then we go out of our way to make connection at the post office and the coffee shop and it's just this little raising of awareness really and trying to overcome some of what the market and the media have kind of piled upon us with their messaging of diet culture and ageism and that sort of thing. Yeah, so well, it, that brings us to that um, ageism language. Yeah, I mean, it's it's rampant. <laughs> I know, I've noticed. Yes. Living in that age group now. Yes, exactly. And, and, and it's something you don't really notice until you get there. You know, it's it and, and we were probably all guilty of it ourselves before we got there. Yeah, you definitely. Know, both, both Wendy and I are in our, our early 50s, we're both 53. And we're, we're starting to see that with our peers, we're definitely seeing it with our parents. Um, and it's, it's, it's alarming in so many ways, most mostly because it's so limiting. It's so limiting and we are limitless you know if we if we really put our minds to it and that we take care of ourselves we are absolutely limitless and and we don't need the outside people telling us what we can and cannot do which is what but Wendy and I always talk about we always talk about going inside ourselves because that's where the real truth is that's where the wisdom is and we don't need people searching on the outside for the answers and telling us what is beautiful, what is right, what we can, what we can't do. We have to know that for ourselves. And yes, that's really I like that. Good. Yeah, we're a whole person. Yeah, but it's, and it's yeah. very much learning to trust your intuition around something and, and mm. like you say, notice what your body is doing. Because I, I know when I was on chemo and I introduced some um, vitamins, to mm -hmm. my routine and all of a sudden my bowel movements changed and I thought well you know it's chemo but it was funny that it happened just when I started taking the vitamins so after two weeks I stopped taking them and my bowels moved back to normal so you've really got to to sit with your mm -hmm. own um, inner knowing um, yeah. become still and quiet and I guess that's part of the five foundations as well learning mm -hmm. to to sit with yourself and you know yeah let your body speak to you. I'm glad I escaped with chemo. I just had mm. radiation. Mm. Oh, it was bad. Yeah. I was right. wondering yeah. when I turned 50 and I, I worked for a doctor then and he actually said something to me and I hope you don't mind if I'd love to ask you. And he was saying that, um, do you need to eat less and move more when you get older? <laughs> that's what he told me. Well, eat less, that's move such more. A that's such a blanket statement and it depends on who you are, right? <laughs> yeah, that was his blanket statement. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. if you want to scale a mountain, if you want to go climbing or if you're gardening a lot or you're running after grandkids or, um, you know, learning something new and you cut back a bunch on your food, you might just kind of wither. I, you you know, so for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So it's, so, you know, that's one of those blanket statements, like Debbie said, that it's just like, well, what does that mean? What, why? Just because I turned 50, I have to be a certain way. And we, we want to just go, 
was quite yeah. a close day. <laughs> that was a plastic <laughs> surgeon, by the way. <laughs> ah, ah. So can I yeah. love to ask you, like, what's the personal story that led both of you to becoming Nourish Coaches um, and what happened in your own life and the turnaround that was significant to you both, both to help others? So for instance, Debbie falling pregnant, um, Wendy in the corporate world with the metal spoon stuck in the, in the yogurt, you know, your husband <laughs> found that container in the car and that became yes. a symbol. Would you like to speak about that? Sure, sure. Thank yeah, you. I was I was raised uh, probably a little bit above average in the healthy realm. You know, my mother really kind of was tuned into not having so much sugar or, or processed foods in the house, and so I uh, I grew up not having any kind of soda pop in our house at all or anything like that. So I already knew a little bit more than I'd say the average kid. We didn't have candy regularly, um, so I went through life thinking I knew most, you know, what, what healthy meant for the most part. And it wasn't until I tried to get pregnant and I was only, I think I was 27 years old, 28 years old, which is, is so young, right? So <laughs> I, said, young. I, I could, I, I wasn't getting pregnant and I, I, my husband was healthy. I was healthy. What was going on? Why couldn't I get pregnant? And it really, it, it really kind of shifted my mindset into I, I was reaching out there, reaching out there, reaching out there. What am I doing wrong? I need to eat this. I need to do this. I need to take this medicine. I need to get this service done. And it wasn't until I kind of tuned into myself and said, what is right for me? And what can I do to put myself in a place where my body will accept a pregnancy? And, um, and miraculously, that worked. <laughs> it actually worked we tried to get pregnant in other ways that, you know, we went the artificial insemination route, which felt horrible to me. Mm -hmm. And that's really what turned me around. And so um, I thankfully did get pregnant and then got pregnant again. And then it became a quest to have the healthiest kids in the world. <laughs> and, so, <I'm> lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I went on that route and it really was, it, it was really important for me for these kids to not have any kind of artificial anything to really dig their feet into the earth to experience life that was real and 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 healthy in a way that was not just you know healthy nutritious foods it was just living a healthy lifestyle and through that i i got into communities that were on that route that directed me towards the school where wendy and i met and wow. that's and it's it was a beautiful thing and that's where she can kind of cut into her story because that's a sort of our meeting point right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and like Debbie, this is a second career uh, being a health coach. Um, I was in the corporate world. I loved it in the beginning. It was fabulous. It was fast paced. I had all the energy in the world. I was, you know, very proud of all the hours that I put in and um, it wasn't towards, it was towards the end where I was eating out more. I wasn't sleeping as well. My migraines got worse and the stress uh, in the corporate America, the whole kind of world that I was in, the market that I was in got so cutthroat that it, I, I was, there was a lot of pressure. And so I just wasn't making fabulous decisions. So um, after that, came down kind of on, you know, after that ended, I just, I was on a quest to make myself feel better first and then decide what, you know, what can I do next? What was the next path? And I went to a yoga studio and heard this talk about eating real whole food and feeling better. And I was like, that makes so much sense to me. Like it hit me. I was like, of, of, of course that's true. You know, my, my dad had a, farm and animals in his life, you know, from his grandparents and my, my other grandmother, my mom's grandmother always did home cooking. And so it just, it just made such good sense to me. And so I rolled in the same school and then Debbie and I met and synchronicities happened and yeah, it was, it, and, and one thing that Debbie and I always say is the journey's not over. Like we don't know everything. We, our job is to help help people uncover their own path in their own way and all of my experimenting you know I'm still I'm still learning I'm only 53 I'm only halfway through my life I've got so, yes. much, so much wisdom to that I have collected and so much to learn from 
the world. Yes. So. Yeah. Learning as you go. So, you know, I noticed you said before you used the word why, and I heard you speak about that um, in another one of your podcasts. You know, when someone comes to you and you're helping them with a program, you start with the why. You just keep asking why. So you can tell me what's the why about? What's, what's someone coming to you with and where does that process of why start? I, I'll go ahead. I think I think that I think that people, like I was saying, they 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 listen to what other people say or what they should be doing all the time and um, tuning into themselves. You know, eating eating a plate of broccoli may not be pleasant for them. You know, they but they're eating it because they know it's got good vitamins and minerals and it's supposed to be good for their body. And so when people come in and the first thing we say, you know, one of the first things we say are, why did, why did you call us? Why are you here? And they say, because I want to lose weight and, or, uh, because I don't feel good. And we say, well, well, why, why, why coming here? Is that going to help you? Um, because then I'll get healthy. Well, why, why do you need to be healthy? <laughs> you know, and you, it's like that onion that you peel away. And ultimately you get to the real reason that you're there. And mostly, I mean, it tends to be the same answer almost for everybody, you know, is that I, I want to be able to do stuff. I want to be able to garden into my nineties. I want to be able to play tennis into my nineties. I want to be able to get on the floor and play with my grandchildren. I want to, I want to be able to travel as long as I can. I don't want limits. You know, I want to feel good. I want to be able to be and not suffer while I'm being. So that's really the ultimate why that most people get to if you peel enough of the layers away. Do you want to add to that one? Yeah, I think also one of the things that Debbie and I have started to unpack are as we talk about diet culture and labels that we've been either adopted by virtue of our uh, environment or um, you know, our culture and that sort of thing, or, or, or who, who we are supposed to be when we were younger, you know, we've adopted identities. And part of the why is marrying our values and our identity with the why and putting them together. So we're, we're more in alignment with what we're doing to care for ourselves. And what does that ultimately mean to you, your family, your environment. So it's it's not really about weight loss. It's not really a, about, it's not about that. It really is about feeling better so that we can ultimately be a contributing part of society, really. Yeah, yeah. Happier. yeah. yeah. and because you, if you're not focusing on, on the actual why, it's harder to stick with, um, your plan, like if you think your why is just because you want to lose weight, it's harder right. to keep going with that because that's not really the end goal. Right. You know? right. I yeah. love how you say, go on, go on, you yeah. go. Well, exercise, for instance, I was listening on um, one of your many talks and I love the fact that you say, I personally, and I hear that I'm very active, but I, it has to be fun when I exercise. And you were actually saying, um, well, just moving moving that's uh, psychologically that's better for someone like me because that's moving can be walking fun dancing swimming fun not going to the gym and you know doing weights like i find that i don't like the gym at all yeah so so, I like that. so as part of of your routine when you're working with a client i imagine if they come and they they need to move then you're finding out from them what movement is best for them mm. that's where it's tailored to yeah. the individual absolutely exactly. yeah. yeah it's so important that each person that we see everyone is so unique and everyone has their own likes and dislikes and motivations things that'll help them things that'll move them forward and that's ultimately what we're trying to do is get everyone to move forward whether it's a teeny bit or a leap or whatever whatever pace they need and sometimes it's one step forward and two step back you know we we have we have clients like that too and it's just a matter of okay, let's keep just going forward with which, whatever works for you. If we, if we prescribe to them, well, okay, well, you need to eat kale and you need to <laughs> walk for two miles a day and you need to do meditation for 30 minutes a day. You, 
if someone told me that the first thing I would say is, nope, I'm not doing any of that stuff. You know, I, the yeah, well, that I am, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me it's too. Not, it, it's <laughs> funny, just with the kale, there was a, a Facebook um, joke one day. It was a picture of someone frying kale in a fry pan, and they said um, it's a good idea to mix it with olive oil because that way it slides into the bin a lot easier. <laughs> And there was a lot of people could identify with that. But oh, anyway, yeah, but I, I, I guess, too, I was listening to um, one of your podcasts where you were talking about, you know, personal stories, client stories and a woman who, you know, you were um, helping her to get a, a routine organized and she had young kids. She said, oh, you know, I, I don't have the time to myself. And you said, all right, well, you just got to wake up earlier in the morning before the children are out of bed and start your routine then. And she was like, ah, oh, but I can't get up early in the morning. So I'm one of those people. I say I can't get up. But she started, she made a commitment to change that part of her life. Um, and it was life changing for her. So I, I think a lot of it too is you have to be willing to make a commitment to changing something, don't you? if it's yes. going to work. Yes, there's a willingness and also um, there, there, there needs to be some curiosity and a little bit of play and experimentation with taking on new habits. And unfortunately we give up on ourselves so easily. We really do. We think, oh, because there hasn't been any change in two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to give it up. Well, you didn't get there in two weeks. It's been 50 years, you know, that you, know, <laughs> you are, you're, you're in your habits because you've been doing them for 50 years. And then we have such high expectations and we kind of tackle these things, especially, um, you know, during changes of life and changes of the calendar. And I'm just going to change everything. Well, it's, um, yeah, we need to sprinkle some curiosity, some grit, some grace. We need to put some wonder in there, you know, um, some self-care and reduction of criticism. You know, when we were talking about ageism, there's there's energy and language. Our words matter so much. And so um, when that young woman, when the woman said, I can't get up earlier than that, we had just had a conversation about language and she said, I can't. And she's like, oh gosh, I said, I can't, but physically I can, technically I can. And then she's like, well, why do I say I can't? Why do I always say I can't? She's like, why don't I just try it? And that, that was the, that was all her just exploring why she thought the way she did. It was, and she's still getting up early. Great. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. that make a difference? Yeah. But that that's just wonderful about your process that you, you literally guide people through everything. And, and it comes back to the why again. Yeah. Why can't, why yeah. can't you get up in the morning? Yeah. Why, why yeah. are you telling yourself can't? Yeah. 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 And, it's the and, questions. It's the questions yeah. that get them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you said, and too. reframing things, too, where we, she was talking about the can't and the, we, I was mentioning the should. We, we want them to change should into could. Yeah, because we should never say should. Mm. Yeah, ultimately it's a mm. choice. We all have choice. We all have agency to do something or not do something. And it's our choice. And people are stuck in the should. And we, we've said it before that people should all over themselves. And it's it's not a healthy place to be. It's not a nourishing place to be. When we have agency and we have choice to do things or not do them, that's that's where we want to be. It's amazing how the body regenerates, isn't it? If it's got the right tools. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and the yeah. whole mindset. And, and Look at you. Uh, I know in counselling, because I'm, I have a counselling background, if, if people say, I'll try, that also means, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so we, yeah. we want to try to be out of that language as well. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 And what about um, setting realistic goals so that people don't lose their motivation as well and become discouraged? Yeah, I think that a lot of people, especially at this time of the year, you know, it's New Year's and people are motivated to, you know, do to start again. They're like, OK, I, I'm clean slate. They often take on 
a, they take on too much. You know, they say, okay, this is it. This is the year. I'm going to go to the gym five days a week. I am going to cook five meals. I'm going to cook five dinners every week. I'm going to, they make all these wonderful plans that sound great. And, and people egg them on. They say, yes, excellent. You're going to do great. <laughs> But it's not, it's not sustainable. It's not possible. You can't go from zero to 60. It, it just yeah. doesn't work that way. And so what we, what we try to do is when we ask people in our, in our groups and in our clients, we ask them, what, what would you like? What, what do you, why are you here? What are the, what are the goals that you want to reach? You know, what, what is that end zone that you're looking at when you come in here? And they tell us these grand plans. And so we say, okay, let's chunk it down. What's one little thing you can do this week? What's one thing you can do this week? And sometimes it's still too big. It's still like, oh, I'm going to meal plan every day this week. No, no. Okay, let's let's chunk it down a little bit more. <laughs> because ultimately, it's the wins that they get that will motivate them. And yeah. if you if you do if you if the idea is that it's so small that it's almost impossible that they can't do it, it's going to be a win, and they'll be like, all right. It's like that checklist that you make of to-dos. And sometimes you put the teeny tiny things on there just so you can check it off. It's we need those wins because they motivate, made up, motivate us to keep going. Yeah. So, Yeah, it's like with exercise. If you haven't exercised forever and you suddenly go to the gym or whatever, you've got to probably just start walking around the block a few times, yeah. I guess, is what you're saying, small steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still the small yeah. achievable yeah. steps. And and what about your 80-20 rule? This is such a big one because there um we're <laughs> again our society is kind of uh fixated on perfectionism and um but we are humans and we have social lives and we have celebrations and we have uh, life to live. And, and one of the things that there's a lot of rigidity with perfectionism and we really want to help people infuse pleasure and joy in their life. And sometimes when they come to us, they think they have to give everything up to feel better. And we're, you know, for the person who says, I'm, I, I really have to give up ice cream. I just will never have ice cream again in my life. I'm like, well, is that true? Is that you know, and, and so we kind of set ourselves up with um, boundaries that just aren't, they, they aren't doable boundaries. And so um, the 80-20 rule, and for some people, it needs to be 90-10 or 95-5 for them. So the 80-20 is just kind of the, the framework for it, but that, that they choose the days in which there are celebrations and they choose, you know, it, and so it's really saying perfectionism can be so tight that we break. And so where is the sweet spot that we can find together? And, it, and that is where the experimentation really comes in. Yeah. I, I think too, like the, the more you set your intention to feeling good within yourself, when you put something in your body that isn't as good, like an ice cream or chocolate, you really don't enjoy it so much anyway, do you? you like it's, it's nice to have those treats, but yeah, when, when your mind is really set on, yeah. I mean, it's easy to fall back into bad habits, but I like chocolate yeah. once a week. <laughs> yeah. But it, I know just that, um, yes. giving yourself, I do some, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Giving yourself some um, pleasure. And you know, that's one of the things we say to people is, is, is have it and savor it, savor it. Like it's the last one you're ever going to have in your life, but it's not going to be, but do that because it's, it, it's so enjoyable when people feel that diet culture, that guilt, and they feel bad about everything and they it's a moral attitude about school about food they they don't even taste it it's like it's like they just do this and they don't get to enjoy it at all and so we we say please have it but have a small have a small piece and let it last forever like just savor it you know it's sort of like i think of if you know charlie in the chocolate factory that that yeah. story of of when charlie <laughs> got the chocolate bar the way he 
savored that chocolate. I mean, I remember that from when I was a little kid. It was like, oh yes, that's chocolate is the most delicious thing in the world when you when you savor it because you think you're never gonna have it again. Um, but it's but people don't do that because they feel bad and they feel guilty and shameful about eating things that they that the diet culture tells them is bad for them. <laughs> Yeah. One thing I've learned getting older is that it, if you do savor, like your um, brother-in-law, he's 94, we talked to him yesterday, savoring every single mouthful um, and tasting it, and therefore you get full much faster as well, don't you? So you don't need to eat as, as much because you're savoring every second and you're full. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a while to get full, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So a mindset in our environment when we eat makes such a huge uh, difference with how we assimilate the food and how our body responds to it. And um, even the blessing, if we just say thank you to the food beforehand, there's, there's energy in that thank you too. And it, you're giving oh, everything a little bit of vitamin love, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I spent a month at uh, an Ayurveda detox center in India. Uh, yeah, after my chemo so and incredible. absolutely it, they had a woman chanting all day in the courtyard she was chanting um, prayers to wish us wellness and health and love and healing before meals were prepared and before they were served all the kitchen oh. staff and the director of the center would chant healing loving prayers into the food and before we were given any herbal medicines or what have you we also had to chant um uh, a healing prayer about this is going into my body because i i love my body and i wish to heal so yeah powerful absolutely mm -hmm. powerful did you really powerful and how, and how you received the food compared to how you had been before that sorry what was the question did, did you notice a huge difference in your own, in yourself from how, from how you received food and enjoyed food compared to what you were doing before that? Oh, absolutely. It, it made me eat slower, actually, mm -hmm. because suddenly it was a sacred act. Um, so yeah, it made me eat slower. And because you're eating it slower, you're actually tasting it, you know, mm -hmm. it's hitting the taste buds instead of going straight down into your stomach. Mm -hmm. But they, they also had a system where at mealtimes, you weren't supposed to speak. Um, because speaking can upset you. And so it upsets your digestion while you're swallowing the food. So uh, I always sat at the silent table. Um, and a lot of people did choose to sit and talk. Um, but I noticed the, the Asians too, they don't speak when they're eating. Interesting. They, they actually, yeah, if you so go into um, see a table full of I Asians in a restaurant, they will just be eating. Talking's done before that. and after a meal. Yeah. Yes. That's mm. so interesting. I have noticed that and always remarked on how that was, it was kind of odd. It was so quiet. Yeah. That's it upsets the digestion. So they literally just enjoy the food. So the French um, are a bit like that too. Yeah. I know Debbie, you went to Paris, the French with the yeah. way they eat. I just love, love that culture. They certainly didn't, they, they definitely spoke to each other while they ate, but, but they it was it, the, it. The, difference, yeah. Yeah, the difference was it was an event and it was strung mm -hmm. out over such a long period of time. It wasn't, you know, eating was just, it was this beautiful thing that they all celebrated. It wasn't just a thing to get over with or something to, so that you can move on and do something later. It was just a, an event and it was definitely changed the way I looked at eating for sure. Yeah. Right. So yeah, and everything has it, a vibration. It does. Everything, everything. It does. And I, I know that for me, when I was in the corporate space, I brought home energy that went into my food that did not serve me. And when I slowed down, and I really was present with chopping up the vegetables, you know, because I didn't used to like doing that. Now it is sacred. It's kind of like, oh, look at all the colors and the flavors. And it's, that is all mindset shift. That's not um, someone telling me it's practice. You know, we need, we, we, we need to practice and kind of, kind of open up and, and nourish these things and not expect ourselves just to have it happen overnight. I love, I love all the chanting and that, that sounds beautiful. I put, put it on the bucket list. 
yeah. yeah. But it, yeah. and you, even that word nourish, you know, I, I, when I used to think of the word nourish, I only thought of it in terms of food. I'm mm. nourishing my body. But when I was just listening to what you girls do and your five foundations, I thought, wow, it's like it's nourishing my my mental body, my spiritual body. It's nourishing my soul. It's nourishing my emotional body. And suddenly just that word nourish becomes a sacred ritual and I feel like I'm doing something really loving for myself when all those things are in balance you know yeah. so it's yeah. it's beautiful I'm a bit curious to ask you you've got one of my favorite foods or fruit or fruit or vegetable avocado as yeah. your yeah. symbol uh why did you choose that is it because it's a multivitamin in a in a in an object or not why did you choose the avocado <laughs> you know I don't I personally don't remember why we actually chose it aside from the, it's just beautiful. It's, mm. it's beautiful. And we both love avocados and I don't remember the actual choice when we did it, um, having a whole lot of thought into it. I think it was just, what are we going to put on our cookbook? Says it all. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think there was some, uh, uh, divine goddess in in the room when we designed our logo <laughs> and avocado became it because it's just, yeah. Um, I wish we had a good story about that. I know, I do too. <laughs> I can make one up. It's multivitamin. It's got everything. Good fats and it's, 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 it's like the egg, it's a perfect food. You know, yeah. the same shape as the egg, right? It's a yeah. perfect food. I do have a quick story. I had one client who said, oh, I hate avocado. And I'm like, wait, can you even be my client? No, I, but she... <laughs> Basically, I, I kept asking her, well, when was the last time you had an avocado? Like, did you have a bad experience? Did you have too much guacamole or like what happened? And she said, she, I gave, you know, gave her space as a coach and just sat there for a minute. And it took her a little while. She said, oh my gosh, I've never tasted avocado. I just thought I hated it. I had this story in my head about hating avocado. And so she, and I said, well, is it something you would like to explore? I'm not going to tell her to eat it. And she explored avocado and she said it opened up her whole new world and attitude about food, but just that one simple question. It was just one simple, oh, really? Where did that come from? And then that we un unpacked something. So yeah, that's the avocado story. <laughs> well, that's that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. But I, I think I'd I'd like to explore the um, peri and postmenopausal uh, challenges now with health, um, particularly you know to do with sleep. Uh, I I didn't have a lot of problem with menopause except for hot flushes. We call them the hot flashes. Yeah. I believe yeah. in um, America. Um, so the hot flashes and sleep. You know, many women their sleep just never goes back to normal again after menopause. So, and, and I know you have a whole thing on sleep and gut health and the relationship there. So yeah, let's talk about perimenopause and menopause. Yeah. Well, we, you know, the perimenopause is actually not getting a whole lot of um, attention. It's starting, it's very, very much starting right now that people are starting to talk about a little bit more, but people don't generally don't know what perimenopause is or don't even know that they're in it. You know, right. it's, I can't, I come across so many women who don't have no idea that their reason that they are moody or the reason that they've not sleeping well, or that all of a sudden they, they have stomach problems because they're still getting their monthly period, but they're in their forties or, you know, it's, it's, and they have no idea that what they're experiencing is perimenopause, you know? And so it's something that happens to most women, but not all women. And it, it also is something that is different for every single person. And so it's not so easy for the medical world to say, this is what this is, and this is what you need to do because there isn't one thing to do. And it's not that everybody goes through it. And so it's, it's a little bit of a challenge, but our biggest advice I'd say for it is not only to, to understand what it is, and we have a couple podcasts on it, as a matter of fact. So to understand what it is and then to have compassion for yourself because it's a it's a time of transition. It's a time where your body is making huge changes. It's it's just like puberty. It's like the opposite of puberty. And and everybody remembers puberty. Yes. <laughs> it, was not, it was not a fun time back then. <laughs> and some of us 
may have daughters going through it while we're going through yeah. perimenopause. And it's it's a it's a time that's disruptive in many ways, but it's also beautiful because it's a transition into a new era of your of your existence, into a new place that's really kind of exciting. And and what a lot of people realize too is once you kind of go through it, and especially after you've gone through the menopause and your post-menopause, it's almost like the sky opens up with sunshine <laughs> in, in a lot of cases, not everybody, but it's sort of this place where all of a sudden you just can ah, just relax. But but it is very disruptive and and um and it's okay. Have compassion for yourself. You're not gonna sleep the same way that you used to. You're not gonna be able to move the same way you used to move. There's things are going to change. And that doesn't mean you're limited. It just means it's different. It just means that it's changed. Yes, that's that's the thing. You have to that's part of the mindset, being able to adapt to the change and not identify so tightly with who you were. It's like, well, this is who I am now. It's not a bad thing. And yeah. just adjust accordingly. And then you'll yeah. move through it a, a lot better. And there's and a you, lovely oh go on, Wendy. Well, I just Ross, I think that's so true about the idea that um like it it doesn't have to be bad, you know, as, as a child, I thought my period, oh, my period, you know, and I was, I, I had a bad attitude about it. Um, and that's unfortunate, you know, I'm hoping to coach my niece a little bit differently, you know, help, help coach her through that and say, this might just be a time where you rest just a little bit more. Um, but but being with the emotions and learn like this is where the mindset piece comes in so strongly when, that when the hot flash comes when the rage comes or when the sleepless nights and you're just lying there it's having this witness you know being the witness that you're going through it and saying you know what you're gonna this is gonna pass and what is this teaching me? Maybe it's teaching me about slowing down. Maybe it's teaching me that getting crawling into bed 15 minutes early is going to be my thing. Maybe it's cutting out a little bit too much caffeine in the afternoon. So it's it's this rich time of exploration. It's kind of like a, a metamorphosis. And I think we we too, too many women hate on perimenopause yeah. and we how to change the language about it, that it can be a beautiful transition. And like, like Debbie was saying on the other end, maybe at the other end, we write the book, we climb the mountain, we discover traveling, we, um, you know, pick up gardening, whatever, what, you know, start painting, whatever it might be. It's like this, it really is a juicy time of life where it could be if you put your mindset to yes, it. <laughs> I agree. Turning 50 for me was the best birthday ever. It really oh, was. Yes. Lovely. I can't believe it. Yeah. Cause it just, your kids are growing up usually yep. and you've got a chance to be yourself, you know, yep. if you just sit quietly, but change is really hard for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I, remember, of um, I remember reading, um, I think it was a book about menopause and it uh, said, you need to let go of the life you thought you wanted in order to have the life that you truly deserve. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, because we keep working towards that, that picture in our head of what things should look like, mm -hmm. and we need right. to let go of that so that right. we can open the door to really just having this amazing life, but yeah. you know, not clinging too hard to yes. a, a picture that might not be yeah. a realistic Our society picture. doesn't make it easy though, yeah. do they? Yeah. They that's yeah. true. That's no. true. Like you haven't had it just because you're 50 and 60 and 70. I'm 70 this year. Um, oh, wow. Just, Happy oh, yeah, birthday. Just, oh, thanks. In May. It's a bit, yeah, yeah every, it's just a milestone. And again, like we've all had our cancers and everything else and just a blessing to be here. But um, no, it's good to hear that you think about it being positive. It's because uh, I didn't think of it as being positive menopausal time. I was before 50. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, that's lovely the way you described that. Yeah. yeah, I I thought it was fabulous. You know, we, we're all um, so happy when we can stop the menstrual cycles. Oh, and but for some grieving. women, it was the grieving. Oh, too. not for me. It can be, yeah, and it can, it can be both. You know, it can be both. I yeah. I grieved it too. I was like, oh, that's it. No, nope, I can't. Even though I I didn't want any more kids, you know, yeah. for many years. But the fact that I absolutely couldn't was like, yeah. oh, you know, it's so. 
<laughs> and it's okay to grieve it. We all grieve our our past selves. You know, it's it's a it's we we're not that person anymore. And but it's also we're birthing a, this new person, you know, and it's, it, it's a, it's such an exciting thing, especially if you're wide open, if you're wide open and saying, whatever comes to me, instead of saying, okay, now I'm going to do this. And now I'm going to do this. And now I'm going to do this. It's like, okay, what can I do? I can choose. There's so many things to choose from. So, yeah, I, I love that expression. I'm birthing a new me. <laughs> yes. I love that too. I must yeah. write that down. So I remember it. That's really, it's nice. really good. Yeah. And so what, what about sleep? Um, I know I keep wanting to come back to sleep because I know that's a, a really big <laughs> problem yeah, for a lot of people. Um, for a lot of women, <laughs> probably, yeah, probably yeah. men too. Yeah. So, what's the connection between gut health and sleep? I mean, does does menopause because menopause brings with it that sort of sleep problem? Has that got anything to do with gut health as well? Are they two separate issues? <laughs> There, nothing separate there's no separate issues <laughs> they're, they're no. do men get menopause as well oh yeah they 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 go through their own cycle of all through life um they just don't have a title for it and they don't bleed that's all that's wow. i think i that's that's my understanding um and i think they they could probably put some more attention on that, just like they, you know, the medical field and us just by talking about it and communicating with each other and supporting each other a little bit more. I think we don't talk about it enough. And um, yes, we're all connected. Guys go through that. And sleep, I tell you what, sleep for me, it, it still eludes me from two to four. And I could blame my cats. I could blame perimenopause I could blame some habits that I'm still trying to shake or adopt um so there's a lot of practice with kindness in the middle of the night and some meditation and some breathing and to relax my central nervous system so that I don't get upset about the loss of sleep and so when we calm our central nervous system then it calms our gut and it just it really there's such a connection there and so um it's tricky I think you've landed on one of the most tricky tricky things and we need to continue to explore and experiment. And even when we're in bed, we're resting and it's not lost time. And when I heard someone say that, and I wish I could give them credit, I don't remember who it was. It might've even been Debbie who said it. <laughs> when, we're, when we're in bed, we're resting and that counts too. And um, sometimes we... I mean, the hot flash, I cannot control those. And so what we can't control, we've got to somehow bring some sort of peace to it. And um, yeah, that's what I have to say. Nice. But I, what, say the, don't they say the gut is your second brain as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And our, our gut health, it's not that we, we want to ignore that. It's that it's, it's everything, you know, our, our gut is our micro is part of our microbiome, which is our whole body but a lot of things are concentrated there in our gut. It's a big part of us. And that rules pretty much all of our systems through, through the hormones. You know, most of our serotonin is in our gut. And so um, we, we need to, that this is another reason to eat real whole foods and to, and to have that practice of, of being peaceful and mindful because our gut responds to that. And, and, you know, I don't want to think of it as just our gut as, you know, our, our digestive system, because it's, it's not just that it's, it's our microbiome, which is throughout our whole body. It's just that it's a lot of it is centered here. Um, and yes, it does have to do with sleep because it has to do with everything else that we do, but, but sleep being the, like the most elusive thing, especially, you know, for, for women and, and men of a certain age, it becomes more of a challenge. And I think the stress around it is probably making it halfway the mo the worst part of it is is the stress around it. And so right. finding finding peace with it and knowing what I always say, I, I, I wake up two, three, four o'clock in the morning every single night. And my yeah. first thought is, 
how many other millions of women are up right now with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they are. Good. Yeah, and it's very comforting. <laughs> yes, and I give them all love, and I, you know, it's 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 this. Oh, look at here we are, and part of that is is our physiology. To be honest. We, we used to be, um, I think it's called biur biurinal or something. I think that's the word where oh, yeah, before, way before, you know, in ancestral times, we had two times of, of nighttime because we didn't have artificial light. So especially in the winter time, we would go to bed when it got dark. And that would be just an, an enormous amount of sleep to go to bed when it got dark out and wake up when it got light out. So there was a time in the middle of the night that people actually were up with their families because they lived more communally and they were up and they actually had some quiet conversation. They may have gotten something to drink and it was normal. That was what humans did. They had first part of sleep and second part of sleep. So we get upset when we don't get this big chunk of sleep, like <laughs> eight hours consistently, but we're not really designed to do that. So I think it's coming to peace with our physiology and to give love to ourselves and to others who are awake at the same time. It's it not look at it as pathology of not sleeping a solid eight hours without waking up because that's not realistic anyway. Yes. Mind, mindset, perception, language. Well, yes. yeah, it, it affects everything, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, I, I think, um, I think we're running out of time. So what, um, what did you want to ask? Well, I was oh, going to ask Debbie about and and Wendy um, the other things that you do on the side, just briefly, if you don't mind, because you've got the beauty counter, Deb, and um, right. Wendy, you've got the essential oils. I found that fascinating as well. Yeah. Well, for me, the essential oils came in simply because I I really do believe everything is energy, everything, food, language, you know everything the flowers everything is energy and I really found that the essential oil concentration it's just so powerful and so I've loved exploring it I've loved playing with it I put some um, it's called valor I put some valor on before uh, we got on the call tonight and I put some motivation on and peppermint in my mouth <laughs> and so yeah, <laughs> kind of bathed in it and just yeah, if you want your energy to get raised a little bit and you're you you need a little boost from mother nature, um that that's why. I like that. Yeah. 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 And, and Debbie. And I got I also I also use those essential oils as well, but my um I'm involved with Beauty Counter, which is a, a beauty company that sells uh not only makeup but also body care and, and care, you know, cleansing and lotions and um, all stuff. And I got involved with that because the regulation on beauty products here in America is, is disgusting. Actually, it's that you, they can not, they can put whatever they want in beauty products and not tell you what's in it. And it can, it can be pretty damaging to you. Um, so we're trying to get that change. And this company has a big role in in going to the government and lobbying and trying to change the laws so that they can be more transparent about what's in our beauty products. And they have thousands of ingredients that are on their no list wow. um, because they're damaging. Mm -hmm. um, they're unhealthy for us. They make us sick or they make us, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing what people put on their bodies without knowing what they're putting on their bodies. Mm -hmm. and so this company came around with that mission to have safe products that are performing and beautiful. And they, and that's exactly what they are. They are, they, they are performing. So it's, you know, there's plenty of healthier products, but you put them on and an hour later, you know, you have yeah. circles under your eyes. So beauty counter said, no, we want to have really high end products that are affordable, but also perform and, and are clean and safe for people to use and affordable so. yeah and yeah. Affordable. i love the oils i'd love to learn about all of that i've got yeah. a lot of homework yeah so we've we've got um an, an audience that we know is going to come from um the states and we've got audience of course from australia as well so um anyone wanting to come and be part of the five foundations what what have you got on offer online or workshops or Yep. Yeah, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, 
and we have group coaching as well. And we're always running new groups. Uh, they run about six months and those are favorite, um, favorite times for us, really getting a group of like-minded people who all support each other and hold each other accountable. And that's really beautiful. Um, we do have a cookbook also, if you want to get to know us through the cookbook and, um, over the next, we have, we, we've got we some courses. online programs as well. Right. What? Yeah. yeah. But online courses we have, uh, oh, one, you can do it all on Zoom. Zoom. That's good. Yeah. Well, those yeah. are on Zoom, but we have actually some that people can do on their own without, without, you know. Oh, us. great. Um, as a final word, do you have any advice for people who are finding themselves, find, just listening to you for the first time and hearing all this? If you're 50 and over, even younger, but particularly as you're getting older, it's never too old to start right. And where do you suggest they start? Is it one little thing that I eat a special food or do they need to have a consultation with you or what? <laughs> no, they don't need to have a consultation with us. Of course, we would love for them to. They, they'd like some help and support. Um, but they can just start with, they, they can start with almost anything. One of the things that I even talked about today, I did a, a reel on Instagram, is, is starting with a, a, a glass of warm water in the morning before anything else. It's just starting your day with a glass of water to help wake up and flush out. It's okay. a great way to start your day. Thank you. That's lovely. Yeah, and I, yes, and I think that that original message of getting curious, you know, tapping into curiosity and being opened and, and going into the body and drop, dropping from the head into the body a little bit more. We've got so much wisdom and so much to offer the world. We just need to keep sharing with each other and loving each other up a little bit more. I think that's a, another mm -hmm. thing that COVID really taught us is that we really need each other. And, um, you know, as you guys are working together, you know, just as Debbie and I work together, we're very lucky to have yeah. um, each other as coaches and friends and just being able to support each other. And it's never too late, is it, to get healthy? No, no. way. No okay. way. Never too late. There's there's one woman um, who's an inspiration to me. I think she's 85 and she started waiting, uh, lifting weights when she was 82 and she's just rocking it. She used to not have much energy and not want to do anything and now she's just changed changing lives she changed her own and now she's changing others lives just by example it's we we have so much to offer let's not let's uh what was the word you used in the very beginning debbie I don't know, um not remembering the word you used <laughs> well don't 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 put limitations on ourselves that's right don't yeah. limit ourselves yeah like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon yeah. yes okay yeah well that's fabulous girls thank you so much that's been really enjoyable i can't wait till we uh upload it and people can uh get all the information from the links and uh get your cookbook and your workbook and i'll definitely get do some of your courses yeah. well thank you it's been lovely having you on thank you so it's been very much such a pleasure you're just such lovely women it's just a, oh, it's you. such a joy to be here <laughs> and what you're yeah. doing and getting the message out about um so you know, living a beautiful life every day. Just keep, thank you so much. Our pleasure. And I love your accent. It's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>